Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me today to head for an update with my new car, my SLS AMG Black Series, which as you know, I am crazy enough to be transforming with a complete respray from the original Himalaya grey paintwork into my choice of mystic blue, making this my own car, a permanent member of the Shmi Mobiles. Well, today we're going to be heading up to Chartwell in the Supra, a car that needs a good run out. These are basically the daily drivers at the moment and Chartwell have sent me some pictures of the SLS completely stripped down. The body panels have been removed, lots of the trimmings and fixtures have been taken out, the windows, the seats, and everything else. So I'm a little bit anxious to get there today and to see how it looks. I think it's gonna be quite a particularly unusual sight. In any case, it's a long old drive to get up there. I've chosen Chartwell because they did a fantastic job with my Senna repair last year. But for today, it's an outing with the Supra to go and see how the SLS is coming along. Prior to now, these two of the Shmimobiles haven't spent all that much time together, but at the moment, these are the two of my cars that I'm using for daily driver duties and two very different cars at that in the form of the new Toyota GR Supra and the beast that is the AMG G63. The Supra is small, it's nimble, it's easy to drive. It's also pretty efficient on a longer run. And the G63 is the ultimate powerhouse. Luxurious, comfortable, incredibly powerful, and it makes an amazing sound too. But for today, we are gonna take the A90 edition Supra, even though it's one of only 24 in the UK, it's already got about three and a half thousand miles in less than six months. I will be collecting and I think keeping it probably for the longer term, but quite a different driving experience to the G63 behind it. In fact, just look at the height differences. That tells you it all straight away. Today though, we've got about a 250 mile drive ahead of us to head up towards Chartwell, where I seem to be cycling through the different cars. Prior to now, I've taken, uh, of course, the G63 with the trailer, the Senna was up there, the GTR Pro has been up there, the GT8 has been up there, the Heritage RS has been up there, obviously the SLS Black is up there, and today we're going to be taking the Supra as well. I wonder what we'll take next time, we'll have to decide when we go up to visit for the next outing. So today let's hop on board, let's bring this into life, keyless start. Sounds quite nice, not quite as nice as the American cars that have a different exhaust on them, but uh, we'll get set up, get the nav set, and head on out for the drive up today to go see the SLS to see how it's coming along. And like I said, I'm a little bit anxious because I've seen some pictures. You'll see what I'm talking about when we get there. The thing with driving a car like this in central London is that because of the size of it, it is so small, it's just a doddle. It's super easy to navigate through traffic. We have some tiny roads here in London and you can just get down them without worrying about smashing off your door mirrors or scraping the side of the car. Things that you have if you're driving in a supercar or let's say if you're driving in the G63 or something like that or in the likes of the car in front, the satin black Model X. It is a lovely day though and I'm hoping the traffic isn't gonna be too bad today. It should be a pretty smooth drive ahead. The roads aren't that busy at the moment of course and I'm hoping that's just going to make for a nice cruise up in this car which like I say is a great car for this kind of drive I don't need too much practicality it does have a decent boot if you do need it but I just need a car that is enjoyable to drive it's fun it's a little bit sporty in character and of course we can press the sport button which I've set up to individual to basically have the throttle and the power and sport mode but the steering and the suspe suspension in comfort so kind of normal excited driving for the roads rather than out on the racetrack let's say and you get a little bit more sound out of it i might i might be tempted to do some kind of exhaust thing on this we'll see we'll see for the time being though as i say it's a bit of a cruise it's a lovely day let's get on the way yeah, we've got speed cameras on the way up to Chartwell. I've made it then up to Chartwell, where of course we dropped off the SLS Black Series about a week ago. So there's been quite a bit of stripping going on. I've been in to take a look at it already. And um, needless to say, this might be quite a shocking. We'll go take a look at the car as it is, run through some of the parts that have come off, some of the process and what's going to be done to it as well. It is very cold outside though, even though it's very sunny. So let's head straight on inside to go take a look. First things first, in the showroom, there is a Ferrari F40 looking spectacular. And also another Ferrari, the Pista Spider in yellow. That looks stunning too. Two very, very lovely cars. And also they have their 458 simulator here too. But we're in a bit of a Ferrari heaven at the moment. Let's head straight through though to the workshop to go and take a look at the SLS Black Series. I am now standing beside it, which I will show you in just a moment, but this is pretty bizarre. I don't think I have ever seen a car like this looking as it does at the moment. So here it is. 
my SLS Black Series completely stripped down. This is totally unusual. All of the body panels have been removed. Mechanically, it's still actually running. Technically, this could be driven as it is. The engine is all in place. There are some things to talk about, though, as we go around it. Obviously, all of the body panels have been taken off. The doors have been removed. The glass has been taken out. The seats have been removed so that they could remove the rear parcel shelf. The bonnet is gone, the wings, the bumpers, all of those things. There's still a little bit more stripping down to be done. We will take a look at some of those components. Fascinating to see them on the underside and to see some of the areas you don't normally get to see on a car like this. We've just taken off the boot lid that you can see back there, but this, this is totally, totally freaky to see the car like this. In fact, I'm not entirely sure you would be able to tell that this was a Black Series based just on what we could see at the moment. In fact, there are a couple of giveaways. There are a couple of small giveaways. Number one, the fact that the wheels stick out quite so far, obviously with the wider bodywork that the SLS Black Series has. Number two, this is my favourite, the engine with the black badge. Normally it would be a silver badge, but a black one for the Black Series on the 6.2 litre naturally aspirated V8. And I guess you might just be able to tell it slightly wider back here. You've got those wider sections that house the rear tail lights. But this is, this is kind of mind boggling. Obviously the doors mount up here. They normally have those explosive struts to fire them off if the car was to flip over or anything like that and you weren't able to open up the door. Crazy things that they had to do to mimic the style of the 300 SL gullwing doors from back in the 50s. Around the front, just to take a look at some of this. Look how far back the front radiator is from the front edge. The headlights are kept in their exact original position to give a mounting point. Of course, before all of the panels are taken off, everything is measured, documented, details are all taken and saved and noted so that they can go back exactly as they were, but the headlights stay in place so that the panels can start being aligned back from those. Just kind of peeking in though, you can never normally see how much is going on here, the suspension and the arms that you have down there. Now check this out, you've got this uh, almost blanking plate with the fan. I guess it's sucking, extracting hot air out from the engine towards the radiator from the back. What else do we have? The battery, the uh, fluid tank for the washer fluid that sits just inside those carbon fenders that you normally have on the sides of the car. Interesting thing about the side skirts is you have those extra skirts that go on before the body panel that goes on top of them. This is really, really cool. Obviously the wheels and tires. Interesting thing about the tires, I mentioned this before, tires always have, and these are obviously Michelin uh, Sport Cup 2s, but these were manufactured in week 40, 2013. So these tires are six and a half years old and you can tell. Tires kind of have a lifetime of about five or six years before they start to feel a little bit plasticky. Now these are, they haven't actually cracked. Normally they would start cracking away, but I did notice driving it that they didn't have enough grip. So I will have to change those, which could be the perfect excuse to do something to get rid of these ones. We will see a little bit down the line. Around the back, what else do we have? Obviously the boot uh, inner linings have been removed. Look, you can see straight out the other side all very 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 odd oh my gosh this is this is really weird the glass is removed uh, to obviously help paint it will all be fitted back in all the uh, the windscreen as well everything taken out this is cool as well this is the abs system it's all just totally totally strange to see the car in that state next to it though here we have some of the components so these are those inner sills Got the fuel cap fuel filler cap here but this is what I find really interesting, the system and process to make sure you don't get anything wrong reassembling, to reassemble exactly as it all was. So all of the different fixtures and bolts are stored. These are the grills uh, that come off the side sill. So there's a little opening just about here on the back of the side sill. You've got an example here of the different parts, how they all go with the different pieces, all very, very well detailed, the wheel bolts uh, as well. And then, yeah, it will all be reassembled when everything's painted. For the time being though, let's go take a look at some of these parts. The body, I guess, half of my SLS. Have a look at all of this. Across these two bays on the trestle tables, we have most of the bodywork of my car all spread out like this. Not something that you see on a very regular basis, but this is where the parts will all be prepared for the painting to be done. It's quite a process. I'll tell you a little bit about how it's going to work now, but I will pop back up to Chartwell to come and see these parts being turned blue very soon. Now it's quite loud here because in the background, the spray booths are all currently in operation, but of course 
these will be changed to Mystic Blue very soon. But here we've got the full carbon, as you can see of the bonnet. The underside of this looks really cool. It's also got these pads, which are presumably due to vibrations and to keep sound levels reasonable. Not that I would want to block any of the 6.2 litre V8 in the slightest. We've got the front bumper. You can see over there the distinct shapes of that. We've got a side skirt next to it. We've got the two doors here. There's a front wing. You can see the cutout from that side carbon blade that it has as well. And of course here, upside down at the moment, we've got the rear bumper. Now I know what you're thinking. This was a lovely color. The Himalaya gray, a special order on the SLS Black Series. And I am gonna be sad to see that go, but this is ultimately a car that I've bought to make it mine, to make it a permanent Schmimobile. And as such, I really wanted my SLS Black Series to be Mystic Blue, which is what we're doing. And I'll show you the sample of that again very shortly. But one interesting thing about this is that the carbon pieces that you have all around, whether it's the front splitter or the rear sections, are all actually bonded to the bodywork. If you tried to remove those, you would actually run the risk of cracking them. So this is going to take some very, very clever masking. It's a big, big process to mask them up after, of course, all the measurements were taken, to mask them, to sand down the original paintwork before you can then repaint the car completely from top to bottom and then work on, obviously, the reassembly process that comes after that. Here, we've got the fog light, the new fog light we had to fit right above the reversing camera uh, as part of the importation process to have it registered and homologated in the UK. But this is not um, how you normally get to see this stuff. Really, really interesting to just poke around a little bit and see how some of these parts work, obviously being kept like this to ensure the shape remains all correct. This is quite fun too, to see the front, the lower parts of the front. Obviously being a used car, some of these pieces have taken some small scratches, but it's all part and parcel of driving it. And I intend to drive it as well, so it's not worth replacing the parts that I'm gonna go ahead and bash immediately after it's all been done, especially after such a, a full operation, as you can see is being done with all of this. I just find these pieces fascinating. This is huge, by the way. Massive, massive long bonnet on the front of the SLS Black. But how obscure is this to see most of the visual part of the car spread out over two bays here ahead of all the work to be done to get them ready for painting. Let's talk about colours and conveniently it is currently sunny outside so we can go and see the paint sample in the sunshine but this car is going to be going one of my favourite Mercedes colours, Mystic Blue. The full name is Designio Mystic Blau. I think there's one other SLS Black Series painted in the colour but this is going to look fantastic when it's finished. So to show you then in the sunshine this is the colour that we are going and remember this is just a spray out card it's not fully lacquered but you can see a little bit of the pearlescent purpley blue nature of it a very metallic color and one that i think is going to suit this car perfectly and look absolutely stunning i cannot wait and you can see how much darker it goes when it's inside out of the direct light as well this is going to look truly spectacular it is going to be sad saying farewell to the himalaya gray but this this is exactly what i want from this car well it is like this though one thing i noticed that i think is quite fun is look at the positioning of the engine and this front piece is pretty much just a cover the whole engine sits behind the front axle that's why it has this gigantic bonnet but that's also why it drives so phenomenally well part of the learnings from the sls amg gt3 car all brought into the road legal black series and it's just such an epic 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 car which is going to be even more epic when it's fully finished and it's in my choice of color mystic blue i can't wait as you can tell it's going to be a long process but when this is done bring it on. There are a few things I had previously mentioned that I was considering to change about the car. Well, two of those are now ordered. There are some more still to discuss though, but the two in question are to add the carbon fiber door sills. So you could have from the factory, the SLS Gullwing and the Black Series with a carbon fiber door sill here. This car didn't have that option selected, but I've ordered the replacement parts because I think especially with the doors that open upwards and having to climb over the sills, they just look really nice when they're in carbon fiber. Obviously you need PPF so they don't get scratched like the whole of the rest of the the car. It will be going to Topaz when the paintwork is all finished. The second is also to add the carbon fiber mirror caps. Not that we have mirrors at all at the moment, but I think with all the carbon around the exterior, the side blades, the side skirts, the spoiler, the diffuser, the front splitter, it needed to have the carbon mirror caps too. Things I'm still thinking about though, the first is to do with the wheels. Now the SLS Black Series had two wheel options originally, both the same wheel, just in different finishes. This was the option in satin black with the silver pinstripe around it. 
The other had a silver fascia as well, the front of the spokes. But I'm thinking, if I've got a dark blue paintwork, and you'll know me from my 675 LT, these would look really nice in silver. Bright silver with the gold calipers behind and the dark blue metallic paintwork. I think that would look really nice. So I'm thinking about that, given I've got to change the tires anyway. They have to come off at some point before we do any serious driving. The other thing that I'm thinking about is a little bit to do with what we have back here. Underneath the rear, you can see the exhaust box. Now this car sounds pretty phenomenal to begin with. Naturally aspirated, large capacity V8, as you would expect. But what about taking this car, when this is all done, over to visit my friends at Rentec. What about it? Rentec SLS Black Series? I drove AI Motorsports one out in New York. Yeah, I think that might be on the cards for some point in the future. We will have to see. So for the time being, we've got the carbon sills, the carbon mirrors, thinking about the silver wheels, and then maybe a visit to Rentec later on. But you know what? For me, for now, I'm gonna jump back into the Supra, head back down towards London. It's been amazing to come up and see this, though, to be able to see parts of the process here at Chartwell as the car is literally transforming from gray to blue. I can't wait for it all to be finished, but until then, I'll be back to see a few other stages, to see some of the parts being painted, and then, of course, to see the assembly and to see it coming back together before it continues the journey through to PPF and ultimately being able to take this off on other adventures. It's all going to be very exciting but thank you very much as always guys. I appreciate your support an awful lot. That is it for this time though. I'll see you again very soon. Cheers!